What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is iReviews, the show where I go over a comic book, its story, its art, give you my impressions, and let you know whether it's something you should go back to the comic book shop for or not. So make sure you subscribe to get one of these every single week. The book that I want to talk about right now, The Silencer Number 1. So the second book coming out of DC's New Age of Heroes, which is a product of Dark Knight's Metal, is interesting. Art by John Romita Jr., words by Dan Abnett, and a whole bunch of stuff's going on in this one. But given the impressions that I had off of Damage Number 1, I'm kind of curious to see what Silencer can do for me and what it can do for you. So let's start talking about this issue. Let's talk about this second issue from DC's New Age of Heroes, and we're going to call it The Silencer. So we've got art by John Romita Jr., we've got words by Dan Abnett, and overall the front page, the trifold cover, is just nothing but murdering ninjas getting slain by this machine gun wielding, uh, you know, person and it's just like covered in blood it's there's a lot of intensity that really kind of gives you a lot of influence or a lot of ideas as to what this book is really going to be about and then when you hop onto the first page it doesn't change you got a gun in your face blam and then you'd have no real good idea what's happening because you're immediately thrown back into a week earlier where you've just got this normal person you know she just wants to live a normal life she's got her son you know she's walking around basically costco or keymart or whatever you know, she's going up to the, to the cash register. She's taking care of her kids. And then all of a sudden, this gigantic man walks up behind her and is just like, hey, you got a minute? You know, it, there's there's all these subtleties that go in here. She knows who this man is. She knows the reputation of him. His name's Killbox. He's a mechanical being. He's, he's basically a cyborg that's enhanced himself to the point where he is nigh unkillable. But that doesn't stop her from trying. Grabbing her son's sharpened colored pencil, she stabs him in the chest. And then all of a sudden, we kind of shift over to like the view from inside the car. We get the, the view from inside her silence bubble, which basically it, it kills all the noise inside this radius and she just goes to town. She uses whatever training that she has because this is the first time we've really seen her fight. You know, she pierces her his controls based in around his hands. She goes for his voice box so that that way he can't call for backup. She hits him in the man parts. She, she, she hits him in the bits and that is, that's rough. She is holding nothing back. And so, and then she, she goes in to, to kind of devastate him a little bit more, but she remembers why she cut her hair so short before because, man, that long stuff really gets in the way of a good fight. You know, she disables the drivers for his arms. Uh, there's a lot that's going on, and she's trying to figure out exactly who he works for. So she drops the silence just real quick, and then, you know, she's just like, oh, you filthy, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, okay, cool, done. Puts the silence back up, pops him in the middle of the noggin, and then leaves him in the back of the loading dock in a cart like the trash that he evidently is. So she goes back to what she's normally supposed to be doing. She puts the gun in her groceries, disables the silence, and then starts heading home just like nothing happened. We meet her husband. We go to the house. We get to see what kind of relationship they have. It's fantastic. You know, she's very happy with this, but the broken ribs that she just got from her fight with Killbox really put a toll on the hug that she was having. So, you know, she's got to go up, maybe take a shower, maybe get dressed again. She ices up her broken ribs, wraps them up tight, slips her shirt back on, and then gets ready to possibly cut her hair just in case but no there's a ring at the door she grabs the scissors that she was holding puts them in her back pocket in case she needs some defense and who do we see at the door but talia al ghul and evidently these two know each other and they've known each other for quite some time and this is kind of one of those great scenes that you get in movies where the villain shows up to the, you know, heroes or the hero shows up to the villain's house and, you know, the family's around and they try to have, there's this uneasy tension between the two characters. They both know what they do and the, nobody else in the scene does. So they try to pass it off as something that is easygoing. You know, they, they try to make sense that they know each other so that that way they don't give off any hints or tips. And this, it, it's, it's, it's cool. I mean, it's it's not necessarily the, the strongest plot point, but I mean, I understand exactly why you had to implement it because you had to work in the character somehow. Uh, you know, Tali is not here for any kind of conflict. She's here to actually support the silencer. She's here to give a gift, you know, bring her back into the fold. Evidently, she was one of the best that worked for Tali al Ghul, but she's not in the game anymore. She's the only one that's been willfully let go, but that doesn't mean that she's out. And the people that are looking to bring her back in are serious. So they know that the silencer has been reactivated. They know that things are going on. So, you know, they, the Talia and the silencer, they hop in the car. They're taking her back to the airport. Just like, get the hell out of my life. And then all of a sudden, car bomb, which is 
it's kind of cliche, but you know what? It's it's effective. So you've got Talia basically broken and battered, bloodied, sitting on the outside of this car. You've got the the silencer in a very similar situation, still strapped into her seatbelt. And then you've got Blood Vessel and Breacher, two other assassins type uh, assassin type characters that were made by Talia Al Ghul. So it le- really leaves her no choice. She's got to take her gift. She's got to use it, and she's got to be effective. So next time we see her and she's in this mechanical or like biomechanical kind of suit with a with a hat on and she just absolutely destroys these two guys that are evidently elite level people inside the organization and then just stands over their bloody dead bodies ready for what's happening, ready to take on what kind of conflict is coming her way in order to save the life that she lives. So when we're talking about DC's New Age of Heroes, it was all about artist-driven content. Artist-driven content means that they're putting the best superstar team that they possibly can together. So you've got Tony Daniel, who's on Damage. You've got John Romita Jr., who's on The Silencer. You've got Ivan Reyes, who's on The Terrifics. You've got uh, Adam Kubert, who's on New Challengers. You've got Kenneth Rockefort, who's on Sideways. You've got The Curse of Brimstone, which has got Philip Tan. There's there's all these great... You've got Jim Lee, who's on Immortal Men. So there's all these great artists, and they're being complimented by solid writers, like really solid writers. The thing is, we don't know nearly enough about these characters because it's the largest release of brand new characters into the DC continuity in quite some time. So if we're talking about strength of the introduction, I think that... That Silencer is probably a little bit better than Damage as far as, you know, what kind of backstory you get, what kind of context you get for the actual character itself. But I will have to say that I do have a bias against John Romita Jr.'s art. It's not nearly as obvious as, you know, other books that I've read of his that really kind of rub me the wrong way. I can I can appreciate it, but it's one of those... It's one of those comics where it's like, you know what? If I don't like looking at it, it makes it difficult to kind of read. So I'm gonna give it a little. I'm gonna give it a little bit more time. I'm gonna give it, you know, two or three more issues just to see exactly where it goes. But I can totally understand if this is one of the books that I'm not necessarily gonna be kicking around and sticking with through DC's New Age of Heroes. But I want to know what you guys think about the Silencer and DC's New Age of Heroes in general. So hit me up in the comments down below, and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.